think, obviously, bags of face. Some of the defensive reads he's made over the, the, the opening three or four rounds uh, really surprised me, pleasantly surprised me. I get why Liam T Tyndall uh, gets his debut. He's a close season signing from Leeds, but in my opinion, I think Lewis Martin deserved to keep his spot, but who am I to go up against the most experienced Super League coach <laughs> in, uh, in Tony Smith? Well, that's fair enough. Uh, Aaron Moore, as uh, you saw in the graphic there, is our referee this afternoon, Jack Smith is the video referee and straight into uh, the early hands for Ricky Lutelli for the Lee Leopards who have got a couple of big big names missing this afternoon John no Lachlan Lamb missing for the first time since he signed for the club and no Tom Amone this afternoon add to that the fact that there's no Edwin Ipapi uh, they've lost some big, big name players, haven't they, going into this game? Yeah, uh, first of all, Lachlan Lamb, I think his partnership with, uh, with, with uh, Matt Moylan was, was a developing one. I think they look good in tandem. I think that's a, it's a big job for, for Ben McNamara to, to step up today. Tom Amon was massive last week. Meters up the middle, over 200 against the Catland Dragons. Yeah, they're missing a whole heap of stars, but they'll continue to play in the, in the, same, in the same expansive way we've been used to seeing them. Brad Dwyer at uh, dummy half and the first high kick going uh, a long, long way forward here for the visitors from Ben McNamara. He's getting his first uh, hands on the ball this afternoon, having uh, come in uh, for Lee and uh, forcing uh, hold back good metres to uh, just inside their own 20 metre line here as uh, they bring it down the line onto this uh, near side. Three men in the tackle for the visitors. As uh, waiting uh, at uh, dummy half is Morgan Smith. It uh, did look as though they were starting to improve against uh, Catalans last week. A real gutsy performance in Perpignan uh, before, obviously, that uh, try that was conceded within the first minute. But after that, uh, it made a real difference, and I was really impressed by the way they came back into that game, John. Yeah, absolutely, they dug in, but I'm looking at the Lee Leopards here. Pull FC, back end of the tackle count, just about made it to the halfway line onto this near side and they've got a little bit of space over and a man over if they can find him but they can't Liam Tyndall was waiting uh, at the back yes yeah, uh, really efficient really efficient opening minute for the Lee Leopards 90 meter set and then defended it well high kick in towards the corner and O'Brien underneath it and a first run at the whole defense for him as uh, Houghton is involved in the tackle and we'll probably be saying that an awful lot of uh, times this afternoon because uh, the number of tackles he gets in week after week, year after year, is quite simply staggering. I think that's what makes it more impressive, that you know, the, the 400 up for him. He's done it right at the coalface every single week. I mean, how many years has he won, has he won top tackler in Super League? You know, I think it's a, a fantastic testament to professionalism. Brad Dwyer finding Josh Charnley. Another one of the uh, stalwarts of uh, Super League, testimonial year for him. Dwyer, another player who's come in on loan. Rob Mulhern now, he's taking the captain's armband this afternoon for the visitors. Dwyer bringing it uh, back in and Moylan with a kick towards the 10-metre line. And Hoy was chasing it, but then uh, a bit of uh, dilly-dallying. And uh, Tyndall, under pressure, taking the ball into touch. Yeah, it was a lovely little nudge from, from Matt Moylan and a good kick chase as well from Amila Hanley, and he's forced Liam Tyndall into a, a, an early error. He didn't have much choice there, the weight of the kick was perfect. So, the home side under a little bit of pressure for the first time in this spell. And Hughes wants to get everybody underway as uh, Dwyer waits for it. Mulhern now running up towards the try line and taking the first tackle, Dwyer. Back again towards the right-hand side for Moylan. Hands coming down in towards this right-hand side and an overlap here and they've managed to find some space and that'll be a first try for Myla Hanley and it was simple as you like and just as it happened last week for the Catalans against Hull, it's the visitors this time, Lee Leopards, who are first on the scoreboard. It was so good, it was so slick, wasn't it? We were wondering how the Lee Leopards were going to adjust there in the absence of Lachlan Lamour. Ben McNamara has slipped in seamlessly. McNamara will be the first receiver. Moylan's the creative half. But I tell you, the man who's got a key job this evening and who provided the try assist was Gareth O'Brien. I think he's been excellent in the opening rounds of Super League. Take a look at O'Brien's final pass here. Just a lovely cushion ball that gets on the outside of Liam Tyndall. And Amila Hanley opens the scoring. Really slick, really smooth, really sharp start for the Lee Leopards. He only made his first appearance of the season last week against Leeds, scoring his first try in that game 
a Myla Hanley, and he certainly looks like a real live wire on that right flank, doesn't he? Yeah, the, both him and Charney are going to enjoy uh, enjoy some success with ball uh, in possession, I think, this afternoon. Uh, the, the way that the Lee Leopards play, they're one of the few sides in Super League who can go play for play. There's an awful lot of movement between the plays. The, uh, the halves link up incredibly well. They'll swing left to right. Players in position, players all with passes on the money. It's Matt Moylan who has the kicking duties for the visitors this afternoon. He's got uh, two in the bag for the season so far. And this one, that's a fairly acute angle, but uh, shouldn't be too difficult for him. Having said that, he's just pulled it just slightly wide to the left-hand side. And in a game like this, which we are expecting to be tight, kicking will be a real issue this afternoon. Absolutely. Just look at the setup here on the uh, on the the try score in play. Just have a look how quickly they're getting to possession. The depth and the shape is perfect. And then Moylan out the back uh, to Gareth O'Brien. I, I think that's an awful lot of work on the training field. And with the disruption of, they've had, I think a, a big doff of the cap there early on. So Lee in possession again, uh, receiving the ball and uh, pinging it up the left-hand side for the black and whites to defend. Dwyer waits at uh, dummy half again and uh, managing to find a little bit of space as well and hands it off really nicely uh, before it's uh, eventually wrapped up. Swung back inside again, Lee wanting to play this ball very, very quickly and you can see straight away, John, that it uh, does seem that they want to get on with the game quickly and, and cause Hull as many problems as they can with the ruck speed. Yeah, and it's Dwyer as well as Dwyer, an ex-Hull FC player. They should know all about him, he's burst right at the middle of the field and the, you are the, the winning the ruck at the moment. Moylan with the high hoisted ball, and that was uh, dropped down there by Darnell McIntosh, but he was under a bit of pressure. Cheers, Gareth. Well, do you want it, Matt? The ball spilled there, as you can see, by McIntosh, and the referee deeming it to be a knock-on, but what about this run from Brad Dwyer? Yeah, it was great, and to have Ben McNamara on his shoulder as well. Don't forget McNamara making his debut for the Lee Leopards after joining from Hull FC in the off-season. He's had to bide his time, hasn't he? And he knew he was going to be an understudy to Matt Moylan and Lachlan Lamb. He gets his opportunity today, he'll be keen to take it. But Daniel McIntosh would want those uh, last 30 seconds back, I think, in rather non-committal attempt to defuse that bomb, and it puts the black and whites under more pressure. He'll probably have a bit of a point to prove, I'm sure, as uh, it's pulled out to the left-hand side here, and Charnley picking up the loose ball but uh, running up against uh, a black and white wall as Dwyer waits for it to Mulhern Mulhern goes smashing into the Hull defenders just under 10 metres from the line Dwyer again bringing it back towards Moylan and then in towards Frankie Holton Holton trying to bring his way forward again just five metres from the line now Dwyer lining up his troops pings it to the left hand side going down the line all the way in towards Lutelli. Lutelli has managed to keep this ball alive and done well. Over in the corner, is that a try? If it is, Josh Charnley has pulled off an absolute blinder here. Flying into that left-hand corner, rolling back the years. The referee decides to try on the field, but he wants to have another look at this one. And for the first time this afternoon, we go to the video referee. Got a try on the tackle three. We're just checking touchline and grounding, please. Run this through on this angle. It's a ball is in possession. So we'll go back on this angle. All the way through, slow. Let's check it maintains possession of this ball. It's in possession. In possession. The ball is always in the fingers. It's on the line and he is up. Thank you. I've made my decision. Well, how many times have we seen that from Josh Charnley again and again and again over the years? Quite incredible stuff. He's like Rocket Man over in the corner. No, we don't we don't talk it up enough. If anybody watched the NRL this morning, I won't spoil the result for you, but Xavier Coates scored an absolute worldy of a try during that game. Now, look, listen, I'm not comparing the two. 
but the athleticism of the outside backs these days, it's great work from Ricky Leo Telly. And then in inside seven minutes, Gareth O'Brien, the man who I said has got a big part to play, and I think he's in great form, has provided another. Not on the plate, because it took some finishing by Josh Charnley, but another opportunity for Lee Leppers to score. Now, for Josh Charnley, that is try number 232 of his career. He sits third on that all-time try scorers chart behind Ryan Hall and, of course, the retired Danny Maguire. Absolutely incredible record of scoring over the years. Moylan again, this time over on the complete opposite sides. And on this occasion, he's managed to kick it. So it's a 10 point lead that Lee have with only, what, seven and a half minutes on the clock. This is an incredible start from the Vistas. Yeah, they've been really, really quick out the blocks, haven't they? And Josh Chandler, don't forget, he spent two years out of the game as well. At Sale Sharks, that would have been a whole lot closer, wouldn't it, to Ryan Hall's and maybe even Danny Maguire's. But I just think the first up defence, it's not enough. No one's wrapping the ball up. Gareth O'Brien, with any space at all, is very, very good at reading numbers. He's a, he's a genuine halfback playing at fullback who's, who's reinvented himself as a fullback. Nine times out of ten, he'll pick the right option. Incredible stuff that, Jack, uh, that Josh Charlie was only a couple of seasons ago thinking of jacking it in. Uh, all together, but there's a mistake, and Hull now get the ball back with, what, 15 metres from the Lee line, and an opportunity at last for them to try and put some pressure on this Lee try line as Houghton pushes it out to the right-hand side, in through towards the middle. And Houghton waits again. It's Jordan Lane, it was, who was uh, bringing it forward, down to the left-hand side with Nick Staveley. Texoy waiting just behind him and now black and white's gathering in numbers because they sense an opportunity here back again down to the right hand side Herman SASA who we talked about just before the game started as being a big threat and now Houghton pushing it down to the right hand side and they've got an opportunity here but instead it goes straight through and that is an absolutely terrific finish from Tex Hoy floating in on the right hand side reading the ball, taking the opportunity and dabbing down in the corner and Hull are back in the score sheet. Well, they have been punched in the face, haven't they, for the opening five for so many to the game. Well, that's a fair counter punch from Tex Hoy. He started the season on the bench, didn't he? Couldn't get in the starting lineup. Jack Walker took the number one shirt. But Tex Hoy, maybe that's a little nod to Tony Smith saying, look, you leave me out of this side at your peril. Great bit of deception, but it all came from the mistake the first mistake, the first error from Frankie Halton, and it gave Hull FC the platform from which to work. They got that opportunity. Uh, Danny Houghton gets the decent width off the uh, base of the rook, and that causes havoc. That, you get decent width from the, from the base of the rook, that really starts to pull the eye line of those outside backs, the, the, the six, the centre and the wing. It, they start to think and look inwards. Numbers on the outside, Tech Soy with a bit of deception. Hull FC open their account. And here he is with the opportunity now for uh, a chance of getting two extra points on the board. And yet again, it's uh, a tight one over on the far side. So no easy kicks for the lads with the kicking boots this afternoon so far and uh, missed that one. So 10 points to four with barely 12 minutes gone in this game. Strap in because of a feeling we are going to see a lot of tries this afternoon. Yeah, nice early ball, wasn't it, as well from New Brown. Gave Tex Hoy some time and some space. Ball in two hands. Ben McNamara forced into a very difficult position. He just got sucked in again. The width of that pass from Dummy Half and Danny Howe are not to be underestimated. So the visitors kick off again and straight into the hands of Liggy Sau. Oh. He's not had a, uh, a huge amount uh, to do in this game so far. Elsewhere in the other game going on so far, it's Hull KR, the neighbours from down the road who've drawn first blood against the Huddersfield Giants. They'll lead by four points to nil. Houghton to uh, SESA. And uh, bringing it forward now Stavely again. They're coming running forward again once more with Sutcliffe back from a band and back in the side this afternoon for Hull FC as uh, Houghton sprays it down the right flank once more. A little touch for Farmanu Brown and into the hands of Akumbo, who uh, had a very impressive game against uh, Catalans last week. Now, I have to say, I, I ran into uh, 
Akumbo in the uh, tunnel on the way in. And I can uh, safely say, John, he is a unit. He is you, can a big verify, you can verify his size, yeah. <laughs> uh, seven tackle set, though, conceded by Hull FC. Kick too deep. Can't do that. Can't do that in the modern game. Just that extra tackle really gives a side a, a good look at a defensive line in, in the inside their opposition 20. Hardacre. And now to Dwyer. As it's uh, pushed down to the left hand side. And now Mulhern comes away with it. Picks up the tackle from a combo. And now Dwyer. Dwyer to the left flank, trying to find some more overlap and some more space, and he's managed to find Hanley. Hanley getting away from the defenders, and has he put the ball down here? That looks like it's been a stupendous try from Licky Litelli, as he just dived over the line and pushed this one over the line. Let's see, the video referee wants to have another look. It's tackle three, we've got a try. We're just checking ground in, please. Let's be on this angle. Ball's in Latelli's possession. That always appears grounded on that one. We'll just check the corner camera. Back at this angle. His arm is always up, the ball carrying arm. It's in possession. And the ball is grounded. Thank you, I've made my decision. Well, Ricky Lutelli with the acrobatics, a brilliant outstretched arm as he was under real pressure. And Lee have extended their lead. Yeah, this is going to be a points fest, is this? Ricky Lutelli with the latest Lee Leopards try. But I'll tell you what, some great build up play. It was Lutelli who finishes it, but Matt Moylan's pass. I think he rides a tackle before that. You see great ball control there in Ricky Lutelli, the left hand grounding the ball. But when we get another look at this, I want you to focus on Matt Moylan's work in the build-up. He's the man who gets the opportunity now to add the extra two. We, we said it might be a while. Very often, you know, big-name signings come over and they're expected to perform from day one. And, and, and why not? You know, fans would say that, you know, they've been paid the big bucks. They're the marquee signings. Sometimes it does take a little time to settle in. I, I think you're starting to see now those touches of class that were the reason that, that uh, Derek Beaumont and the Lee Leopards were so keen to bring Matt Moylan uh, over to that side of the Pennines. I think there's some, some really silky work in the build-up to this strike. Well, arguably the biggest individual name to come in uh, over the winter, Matt Moylan. And on this occasion, it has gone through. So that's uh, another one on the board for Matt Moylan, who uh, kicked two from three last week yeah, against take, Leeds. Take a look at this for a, uh, an offload, rides the tackle, that's superb stuff, and then just get, it gives Leo Telly one of the best, best broken field runners in the game, you know the power game that he's got, that's incredibly dangerous, real touch of class there from Moylan. Him and Ricky Lutelli, uh, huge friends as well, and it was Lutelli who was uh, very uh, involved in the entire plan to try and get uh, Matt Moylan to come over to the UK. He admitted that uh, once they'd had one or two sherbets, shall we say, that uh, a deal was uh, being done before he knew it. And uh, there was Derek Beaumont turning up at the airport in a leopard print Lamborghini for him. But uh, as you say, slowly but surely settling in, uh, as is Brad Dwyer, who finds Rob Mulhern. And uh, relentless work so far from Brad Dwyer. And an arm round there, which is a little bit high. And the referee will uh, pull them back for this one. Yeah, it's just all a bit too fast for Hull FC at the moment. They're not winning the collision. You, you win the collision, you, shall, you slow the, the, the play the ball down, and that doesn't happen. You don't end up reaching. And these are easy metres, free metres for the Lee Leopards. And they've shown already in the limited time that's gone in this game how dangerous they are in that, that area of the field, this area of the field. Lutelli it is then to get us off and underway again. And... Once more, it's uh, so quick with the hands, Police! the ball in hand for the visitors. Jack Hughes involved there. And the tackle comes in. And straight away, they're so quick playing the ball here. Moylan trying to shrug off tackles. 20 metres from the line. 
And very quickly picked up by Dwyer as well, and he's motioning with his hands there as to where exactly he wants the receiver to come. Jack Hughes it is, who brings it to within five metres of the hull line. Dwyer once more on short this time for Rob Mulhern, who bulldozes his way over the line. And from very, very close in, Lee once again have got another one. And as I say, tries all over the shop in this first half. Yeah, I, I, as the try was being scored, I'm looking at Tony Smith must be 20 feet away from us to the right. He's turned his back and there's a big conversation going on with him and Stanley Jean, part of the coaching staff here at Hull FC because that was far too easy. That shouldn't happen. Credit to Rob Mulhern, he got himself in the right place at the right time, but that's a fair conversation there that's going on. You don't often see Tony Smith uh, on the blower like that, but that's a real no-no in the modern game. So easy from such short distance. Look, yeah, great work from Rob Mulhern, got himself in the right area of the field, but this all stems back to further down the field. Hull FC, they, they, there's not enough in terms of contact and work in the they They move far too easily up the field, they're giving penalties away for flailing arms, and there will be big, big conversations there and big, big questions for the black and whites to answer. Discipline seems to have been a real problem as well for giving away far too many easily penalties, and you mentioned it um, when we were chatting beforehand, before the game, at the number of cards that uh, Hull have been picking up, as well as the number of injuries. I think it's something like 12 players that they've got out at the moment. Jake Truman in particular is a huge miss for them. He's going to be quite some time before he gets back in the side, so it's it's real tough times for the home side at the moment. Well, look, you know, the, and, and part of it's been self-inflicted as well. He, Matt Moylan tax on the extras, that's now 16 points to four, but just on Hull FC. They've received more suspensions covering more games than any other side in Super League in the opening four rounds. They've received six bans, half a dozen players been sat down for 12 games. And that means the guys that are left on the field here, maybe not Tony Smith's first choice, 17. And they're having to make do, but this is just not good enough. It's very close range, not good enough. It'd be very interesting to see what on earth he has to say to some of the players. Uh, when they get in the sheds at half-time. He'll strip the paint off the walls, Fraser. Well, it's Lee who uh, have possession again inside their own half. Danny Houghton will uh, be looking at this game at the moment, considering it's his 400th Super League appearance, as uh, one to perhaps not have many fond memories about in these uh, early stages. And as uh, Frankie Holton brings it forward for the Lee Leopards, Dwyer looks this way and that, and he finds Mulhern again. Try scorer just a few moments ago. And waits again before bringing it out to the left hand side as uh, McNamara gets caught up in the challenge. He's been good opening uh, 15 minutes of the game. Dan Norman took his chance well, made some big meters, big carries. Under pressure again, Tex Hoy. And it's uh, Liam Tyndall who's been kept fairly quiet uh, in this opening 20 minutes on debut for the home side and swung away to the right-hand side by Morgan Smith and it's uh, all a little bit flat so far for the black and whites as McIntosh comes away with it and is uh, brought down just short of 30 metres from his own line. Not enough punch with uh, the black and whites coming out in yardage sets and they've made an immediate change. Okobor has left the field and Franklin Pelé returns from his ban, he's on the field, it's obviously the aim, add a little bit more, go forward, great stuff. They are managing to get a little bit of success he's dangerous. over Te on Hoy, near side. He? Yeah, when Texoy comes into the line, he does seem to give them a little bit of extra something, as Morgan Smith boots this one high up in the field, New Brown goes chasing after it, but Gareth O'Brien is equal to it. God, roll the dice there, the Lee Leopards, blimey, three players within five metres, none of them put the name on it, got lucky. Charnley is uh, tackled. And Josh Charnley does absolutely love playing uh, against Hull FC. His record is quite incredible. Five tries and seven line breaks across his two last Super League games against Hull FC. Scored again this afternoon. And uh, plenty of opportunity, lots of the game still to go as uh, Hardacre tries to offload here, but that one has gone forward. And uh, Hull FC will get a little bit of respite here. Yeah, just a second error from my count uh, from the Lee Leopards. 
It was a drop from Frankie Holton, wasn't it? And an attempted offload. On the halfway line, then it'll be the black and whites who will get his back underway. Ten seconds now. Referee just getting everybody into line. Lee have a terrific uh, record against Hull. In recent years, they've won three of the last four Super League matches against Hull. And that's the picture, that's the view there of, of, of the salary cap that's sat on the sidelines. Some key players missing for the Lee Leopards. They're making light of it, though, at the moment, aren't they? Well, yes, but at the same time, you can argue that's because the home side haven't exactly uh, played a blinder so far and allowed them, in uh, many respects, it's probably fair to say, to, to play in a style and a fashion which has suited Lee so far. Danny Houghton then, bring it away to the right-hand side. And Houghton just getting involved again to try and push it forward again for the home side as Morgan Smith was wrapped up. Here's New Brown, and they go a little bit backwards here, but still in possession and still going as Mulhern goes in for the tackle. Now, play, play three, play four, you've had two halfbacks running the ball. You've got big, big men out there. It's a, set, it's a set that's lacking direction. Your half should be setting up. And the lucky here because there's been... Well, they've been caught on the last tackle. That kind of goes to underline your point. Plays three and four. Morgan Smith takes a run, goes nowhere. New Brown takes a run, goes nowhere. They're going to have to come up with a big defensive set here. Well, some news coming from the bench that Carlos Tumavavi has uh, gone off the pitch and he's iced up at the moment. So that's a real blow for the black and whites. If things are, are pretty bad, then they're getting a little bit worse here. They could get even worse as Lutelli comes away with it down the left flank, waiting for Charnley. Uh, but eventually he's uh, wrapped up in the challenge. But again, Hull having to really be on the back foot because they're so quick in the recycling of the ball here. Just on Carlos Tumivave, they've got a ready-made replacement in Cam, Smot, Cam Scott, who is a, an out-and-out -out centre. But he's coming cold off the bench, and Michele Otelli is already in. Full, he, he's fully warmed up and fully up to speed. Sal making the challenge as Mulhern with a great offload. Down the line it goes again. Lutelli with quick hands to Charnley. Charnley, though, uh, runs into three black and white shirts on the fifth here. And hoisted forward high into the air once again. And a fairly easy one for Texoy to take on the. 20 metre line. Loads coming up for you over the course of the uh, rest of the weekend. Catalans taking on Castleford at 5.25, of course, and then we finish off the round tomorrow with yeah, London against Warrington. Another high tackle has gone in here. And the uh, video ref just have a quick look, but uh, no further action needing to be taken as the ball goes over the halfway line. Yeah, it was Matt Moylan first came up off the ball and then Frankie Halton over the top, but yeah, low, low, low level of force in that one penalty. Let's crack on. Hull FC, of course. One Move. of the teams that were really talked about in that, I think it was the second round game, wasn't it? You were there at Warrington uh, when New Brown got his uh, marching orders for the most bizarre of head clashes and perhaps even more bizarre of red cards, but uh, fortunately since then, the rules have changed and things seem to be settling down a little bit better as far as the discipline's concerned. Home side in possession at the moment, Stavely waiting for it at dummy half and picking it through. Smith down the hands it goes in through towards Franklin Pelle who's coming off the bench. And now Scott with two players over the top and Houghton Waiting again, the ever faithful Danny Houghton is Herman SASA. And they're happy to just throw the ball around here, but they're not going very far forward at the moment. And one or two shouts of dismay from the crowd here. Well, I'll tell you what, this is the, and, and I'm not surprised either. Herman SASA, who we tipped up, start of the game, big go forward, 120 kilo middle, and his last two carries has passed and offloaded. Thinks he's been possessed by Jake Matt. Truman. It's ridiculous. Your job Matt, as a front rower, a middle, a middle front rower, when you're not getting yardage, is to get your head down and run forwards. I've just noticed that Sir Tony Smith has literally just left 
from the top balcony here and he's already on his way down to the touchline by the look so he's with 27 minutes gone he's clearly seen enough and uh, wants to get down there to uh, have an influence on the way things are going for this side because at the moment they are superbly on the back foot because of the way that uh, the Leopards have been playing so far in this first half and here they are coming forward and it's Cameron Scott uh, who's having to uh, do a little bit of uh, tackling against it's Owen Trout. It's an upright tackle and you take him to floor. As uh, oh, Franklin Pelly gets in the challenge. Stay behind. Stay behind. And uh, another penalty given. Yeah, is, that, is that a high arm around the neck here? Or has the referee maybe just called held and the whole play is... Uh, having to let the tackle go either way it's the Lee Leopards who have possession and Dwyer bringing it forward towards the halfway oh, lightweight line as he waits at dummy half but look how the Lee Leopards set up here they'll, they'll set up in a channel that will sit to one side of the stick so they're bang in the middle of the field now they'll open it up by 10-15 metres and then go down the left flank it goes, and a lovely little step in the side and away, down the left-hand side, almost in towards the try line, Kai O'Donnell, and this time it comes back in and Kai O'Donnell does get the touchdown, and Hull are being run ragged, the Lee Leopards are running riot, the referee says that is a try, and the Leopards move themselves further along the line. Yeah, absolutely outstanding stuff from the Lee Leopards, you could see it being... They get the penalty, they get great shape in the field, they set up really, really quickly and slickly. And you see just how the depth, the timing and everything else, straight through a hole and then sensibly takes the tackle, does Kai O'Donnell, and it's Ben McNamara on his debut for the Lee Leopards against his former club. And isn't he happy? <laughs> Absolutely delighted. Terrific setup work by uh, Kai O'Donnell and finished off by Ben McNamara. And as you can see, Tony Smith is down there on the touchline now with his arms folded. He is not a happy man. I think he probably wants to put his boots on and get on the field because it, it yeah. must be so frustrating. All the work they do on the training field will not have looked anything like this. You know, come into this game off the back of a. Uh, a defeat, yes, against the Catalan Dragons, but a much improved performance and taking a little bit of confidence and belief into this game. Don't let, let's not get away from this. This is, this is two teams that really needed to kickstart their seasons. Uh, that had underwhelming starts, inauspicious starts to the 2024 campaign. But I tell you what, it's one team and one team only who've taken this game by the scruff of the neck. Boylan then with a the chance to make it even more painful for the home side. And he's kicked it superbly from a very tight angle. Another one for him. And it's just painful for the, for the home fans at the moment. Well, the, the, the Bucky's had this game as a, as a scratch game, not much between it, and they're rarely wrong. So I'll tell you what, there's one side here that's underperformed and one side that's overperformed. It's a great finish from McNamara, but the build-up is special. We'll, I'm sure we'll get more opportunities to show you this throughout the game. This, the way that the Lee Leopard set up, and it doesn't matter who the personnel are, don't forget who's missing. Lachlan Lamb's missing, John Asiata's missing, two key link men. And the guys who've jumped in uh, have done a tremendous job, I think, keeping that shape. There's so many reps on a training field that allow you to do this on a, on a, on a match day. It is incredible stuff. It's uh, fair to say. As, uh, here comes Holmes for the visitors. As uh, Dwyer, who's uh, been a real box of tricks so far in this first half for the visitors, managing to found Halton. Just on the 40, as Moylan now, who's also been pulling the strings, that's great work from O'Brien, back in, almost founds up Hardacre. Uh, but hands in there at the tackle. Try saving involvement. Side. Try yeah, saving involvement from Liam Tyndall, yeah. Uh, decent bit of positive play, but again, getting picked apart down that short side. You know, it's Moylan and O'Brien working together in tandem. That's, geez, that's so dangerous, aren't they? And Amila Hanley's ball back inside, just picked off by Liam Tyndall. Well, then, with some attacking to do, but deep in their own half. Out on the right-hand side, 
Move, Carol Ben. For Brown. Go for. Brown back into the near side. And look at the way that the lead. Move here, Owen. Hold it Forwards now, are just defending it. in numbers Go here every time the ball comes forward from the whole side as it's kicked long and high and well held on that near side by Amila Hanley. Yeah, it's a good take from Hanley as well. He had to adjust that on the fly, took it above his head. And look where they start. That's the reward for a good defensive set. They start at the end of this tackle, they'll be approaching the 40 metre line. Charnley down in the tacklers. O'Brien this time at dummy half. Bringing it back inside for Lutelli. And Dwyer waiting on the halfway line. Quick hands once more. And that's been a real marked difference between the two sides. The way that Lee have very, very quickly played the ball. Every time there's been a tackle, Oliver Holmes goes down in a, a challenge there, somewhat acrobatically. Dwyer back again. McNamara with swift hands and then a, a high, quick kick. Trying to cause some confusion among the whole ranks, but none coming from Tex Hoy. No, it's plan B from Ben Natamara, but Luke Ricky Leotelli made it look very, very good. Timed his, uh, his kick chase and nailed Tex Hoy on the catch. And again, it's Hull FC having to do the hard yards here. I want to see what Hull FC are made of now, because they've been, they've been, they've been smacked around for the first half hour of this game by a side that's clearly performing better. I want to see how they respond. That's meanwhile, a better carry, that's a better carry. Yeah, meanwhile in the other game going on in Super League at the moment, Hull KR 8-0 up now at Huddersfield. Bouncing back from last week. Rovers. He's uh, in possession on the near side from Jack Brown and then swung all the way out to the right-hand side and a little grubber kick forward. Just giving a little bit of a test for the home side for Owen Trout. But then Hanley, Hanley again, great offload from Hanley and a shove off from Josh Charnley as uh, Houghton goes into the challenge, ably assisted by Liggy Sow. And as you say, John, with this scoreline at the moment, just over, what, just under six minutes left in this first half, 24 points difference. It's going to be a test of character now for Hull to try and get some kind of respectability about this game. Well, it's, a, it's a test of character, yes, but it's a test of willingness to get the ball up your jumper and run hard and straight. And we've seen precious little of that. And Dwyer again through a hole. Terrific running from Brad Dwyer. Dwyer's got support in Zach Hardacre, but Hardacre is hauled down and quickly they play it through the hands. Moylan down the left-hand side in towards the left flank again as Oliver Holmes comes forward here for the Lee Leopards. And they've quickly turned defence on its head once again. Moylan okay, trying to find some space with a grubber kick through into the end, in goal area and Hull eventually diffused the ball. Yeah, two great pieces of attacking enterprise by the Lee Leopards, two really decent pieces of play by Tex Hoy. I think, first of all, the try saving tackle. I think, having looked at this again, Brad Dwyer's probably passed this ball too soon. He's not committed the fullback, or the fullback has not allowed himself to be committed takes Zach Hardacre down and then gets himself into position a couple of tackles later to push that ball dead and just repel the Lee Leopards for at least another 60 seconds. Well, I did wonder, we saw it in the first half against Leeds last week, Lee were starting to look like their own selves again, despite the fact that they've got one or two players missing now. They are really starting to look like the Lee of last season that we grew to know and love as a penalty gets given here. Yeah, this is frustration from Lingy Sau. It, it's legs above the horizontal, it's putting a player in a vulnerable position, and that's that's just sheer frustration from Lingy Sau. Dwyer will get us underway again as uh, it's brought forward down to the near side for the left now, and then Dwyer once more. And... Uh, we're really having a great go at this, Ben McNamara, as he uh, brings it out to the left-hand side, back in again for Dwyer. Dwyer looking for support, trying to find Holmes. Holmes is almost upended. It's it's really almost half-hearted stuff at times from some of the tackling going on from the black and whites as they bring it out to the left-hand side again once more with Moylan. Dwyer waiting at dummy half, and they've got 
men over on the left, but they've gone to the right instead, and McNamara has a big challenge, goes in, and that's a bit more like it from the home side as Franklin Pelly goes in with a big challenge there. But Moylan restarting it down the right-hand flank towards the Hull FC try line, and that's exactly what Tony Smith will be wanting to see from Franklin Pelly there as he put that big challenge yeah, in. Yeah, it's, it's much better, and he's read... The, he's read the, uh, the Lee Leopards intended attack well, but I tell you what, Matt Moylan and Gareth O'Brien are having a real day out here. They must be enjoying themselves so much. They're getting time, they're getting space, they're getting accurate passes delivered to them. It does make you wonder, with Lachlan Lamb missing, obviously, at the moment, Adrian Lamb might have a few decisions to make if it uh, carries on being as successful as this in uh, games to come. Well, I'll tell you what, when I read the team sheet and I saw that Lachlan Lamb's name was not on there, and you add that to, to the players that were already missing, in, in uh, John Asiata in particular, Edwin Apape, Tom Amon, has all come up with another mistake. Loose ball. You, you, were, concerned about, you were concerned about what the Leopards were going to be able to deliver. Well, I'll tell you what, they've answered that emphatically. They certainly have. Just over two minutes remaining in this first half. There's a knock on there. Not with you, Gareth. Just here. Shot clock on. Uh, Nick Stavely just losing the ball, losing possession. And further pressure for the home side to have to endure as we get closer and closer to the end One, two, three, of the first half. Right, One, take a look at you know, Matt Moylan. Matt Moylan and Gareth O'Brien pre-play here, working out to the left-hand side. This is your indicator where the ball's going, where the threat is. Out. And for once, to get it wrong, just well, the pass that's behind. That's been a collector's item so far this afternoon, hasn't it? Moylan, however, Move. does manage to it, regain Lewis. possession. It. No, that's how I've read it. That's how I've read it. One. It comes back in. And uh, Charnley is wrapped up in the tackle. Two. 20 metres from the line. Stand up, go two. And that's uh, Oliver Holmes now bringing it in to Owen Trout. Now. And Trout... Third. With Dwyer at dummy half, McNamara again, Moylan, and they're so quick with their hands here. But this time the Hull FC defence just getting enough in the way of Kai O'Donnell and eventually bringing him down. Closer and closer to the line as it's uh, flung down this right flank. Dwyer, who was caught late at the back there, and he's taken a real knock, and the referee's seen that one. The ball has gone. And it did look like a nasty one on Brad Dwyer that, and a little bit late. Yeah, and again, it's frustration. They just, they just can't, they can't lay a glove on the Lee Leopards. The last couple of attacking plays from the Lee Leopards haven't been uh, without fault. It's not been as slick, but that's a shot in the back from Franklin Pele late. Pele, of course, sent off in the 39th minute, having played only 23 on his whole debut when he was at prop in the uh, FC against KR defeat. He's going to sit down again here as well. He could I think be. Th there'll be a card here. I'll explain it to you. I, I, have, a, I have a feeling this might it's be a yellow. The, the referee back. is in consul consultation with the video ref forced. at the moment. So that's ten minutes. Ten in the bin. Yeah, you, can, you can't complain with that either. You, you, this isn't... Of all, of all the controversy with all the new rules, this is a rule that's been around for a long time and there's a reason for it, it's to protect the ball carrier. They're at the most vulnerable when they're passing or have just passed the ball. You know, it's a late shot from behind. Potential for a whiplash, in, uh, whiplash injury. Thankfully, Brad Dwyer is, uh, is all right. But you see the head rock back there. And Matt Moylan choosing with the half-time hooter just 20 seconds away to, to add two points, a further two points, and take us in at half-time with a 26-point lead, which... You know, before the game, if you'd have asked me that, if you'd have asked anybody that, I'm not sure they would have come up with that with that figure for, for Lee to be leading. But they've been as, as good as Lee have been. I, I think the opposite is true uh, of Hull FC. I, I think they haven't they haven't even got out of the blocks today. Well, Matt Moylan just adding to the misery and boos ringing out from some of the home fans. The referee takes the players off the pitch for the first half. Congratulations between some of the Lee players. They've been absolutely sensational, it's fair to say. And that man in particular, Matt Moylan, is the man who has been really pulling the strings all afternoon. It's been sensational stuff from the Lee Leopards. We'll have the half-time analysis very, very soon.
Welcome back to the MKM Stadium. Second half coming up shortly, but also live on Sky Sports tonight. Saturday night football. Fulham versus Tottenham from 5 p.m. So much to look forward to in a bumper weekend of sport. But so far here at the MKM Stadium, it has been a bit of a horror show as far as the home side are concerned. Lee Leopards leading by 30 points to four. And they are absolutely running right here, John. Yeah, uh, it's been a highlights reel, hasn't it, for the Lee Leopards with uh, five different try scorers in that first 40 minutes. Now, I think, you know, testament to the fact that the amount of changes from key personnel that are missing, how well they've slotted into what is obviously a very well-oiled system. So let's take a look at those tries from the first 40 minutes. Then. And it started as early as the third minute with Amila Hanley finishing off a trademark move. Just look, look at the shape, the depth. And the precision of the passing here, Gareth O'Brien with the try assist to Myla Hanley scored on minute three. That was four points to nil. And Gareth O'Brien providing the final pass. The first of two try assists in the opening ten minutes for the fullback. The second was provided on a plate for Josh Charnley. I say on a plate, it was a very small plate that he had to ground the ball. We talked about Xavier Coates and his heroics this morning. Well, look, it's not quite up there, but we're used to seeing this sort of quality from Josh Charnley. Try number two for the Lee Leopards. Try number two, three, two in Josh Charnley's illustrious career. 10 nil on seven minutes. Then Hull FC with a bit of a counterpunch. Nice wide pass from Danny Houghton. It's Tex Hoy's deception that took him across the line. They couldn't convert 10 points to four, but that was as good as it got for the black and whites because then Lee really did kick into gear, didn't they, with three unanswered tries, starting on the 14th minute with this from Ricky Leotelli. But look at Matt Moyle and the build-up, the silky hands, real elements of class. And Ricky Leotelli, one of the best ball runners, great awareness as well, cut back inside the defenders and had the strength and presence of mind to get to the, the line, 16 points to four. That was followed up, I think, with a uh, the most embarrassing moment and the one that will probably gain a, a lot of interest and a lot of criticism, a lot of critique in the video uh, review early next week for Hull FC because conceding for a pass directly from the Rook from two metres out is a real no-no and that's an embarrassment, that's a blooded nose for the front row of Hull FC. 22 points to four, Mulhern will take those four. Then came another pe great piece of handling play and I think that's smart from Kyle Donald there just to take the, tunnel, the tackle from Texoy but this Hull FC defence now in disarray and Ben McNamara on his debut for the Lee Leopards after joining on a two-year deal from the Black and Whites gets to score the Lee Leopards last try of the half and isn't he pleased 28 points to four Moylan's penalty made it 30 points to four and I tell you what I would love to be a fly on the wall inside the Hull FC dressing room I imagine that there's uh, been varnish torn off some of the furniture perhaps the uh, teacups will be being thrown about all over the place but there's the statistics uh, the stats uh, statistics easy for me to say that tell the whole story 63 percent possession and look at that 820 meters versus 377. That's ridiculous. That is incredible. And that really does show you uh, the story of the first half and just how much Lee have been so much further in front in this game That's all the way through. It's ridiculous. And the missed, the missed tackles uh, statistic is 24 tackles is, 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 is intrinsically linked to the amount of metres that, that Lee Leopards are making. That's something that Hull FC need to arrest and arrest quickly. Big question then, how on earth do Hull FC get back into this game? Well, we shall see because we've got the second half coming up very, very soon. Join us again in a few minutes' time. Welcome back. Two more games coming up for you over the course of the rest of the weekend live on Sky Sports. Of course, the only place where you can see every single Super League game live. Coming up later this evening at 5.25, Catalans versus Castleford. And then tomorrow we finish the round off with London against Warrington. Here at the MKM Stadium, it has been a nightmare for the home side. They are getting right royally thrashed at the moment. 30 points to four. I dread to think what on earth is being said in the dressing room by Tony Smith 
at the moment as we speak. John Wells is alongside me. You've been watching this first half. What on earth does he say to his troops now? Yeah, well, I think he's got to keep the messages simple. You know, these are guys that have been through the washing machine in this first 40 minutes. They've never really got a foothold in this game, and I think for large parts, this front row, and it's and it's a lauded front row as well for, for Hull FC. You've got your, your, your two big signings in the off-season, uh, Herman SSA and Franklin Palais on deck, and I think they've been largely ineffective. I think the starting point really is slow the rook down when, when the Lee Leopards have got the ball because they're getting marched upfield and start to punch some holes yourself. You give yourselves a chance, any halfback will tell you if you've got time and you're on the front foot, you can play. If you're not, you're done. And of course, Hull will start this second half with a player missing because Franklin Pelly uh, sent to the bin just before the whistle was blown uh, for a high tackle. Um, so that makes things even more difficult for this one. First nine minutes and 55 seconds or so. No, they'll struggle with 13 players, so yeah, they're, they're really going to have to aim up for the first nine minutes. They're going to expend an awful lot of energy because there are 12 players on the field. I feel for Danny Howland. You know, this guy's been the heart and soul of Hull FC for the last 17, 18 seasons. Uh, and, it, it, and if we see the same in the second half as we've seen in the first half, the guy's going to go away uh, and it's going to be a, not a very memorable afternoon for him. One thing you can guarantee about Danny Houghton, though, is that he will run his blood to water throughout the afternoon, regardless of what the scoreline is for this club. Yeah, absolutely. Got nothing but admiration for him. But, it, you know, him and, him and Hull FC are doing it tough at the moment. And you see, looking across to my left, we're up in the gods here and we're, we're looking at uh, both coaching sides, one to the right of us, one to the left, and the mood is very, very different either side. Adrian Lamb with a, what I can only describe as a swagger, retaking his position with John Asiata in his coaching box. So it is the Leopards then who will get us off and underway for the second half, and straight away, Darnell McIntosh takes the ball and swings it out to the left-hand side, and Stavely is uh, brought down for the tackle as uh, Danny Houghton brings it out to the left-hand side once more. Let's see what Hull have in this second half, whether they can try and forget about the nightmares of the first half and uh, really try and put some respectability back into this performance. Houghton it is from Stavely. Brings it back into the near side, swinging it out towards Jordan Lane. And Lane is upended just over the halfway line. Houghton again. Swinging to the left for Morgan Smith. And then Stavely again. Closer and closer. About 30 metres from the line on the fifth tackle here. As uh, this is hoisted up in the air from Morgan Smith and O'Brien safe as houses as he has been throughout this game, taking the ball on his own 10-metre line. Yeah, if you're going to start a half, that's a decent way to do it. 100-metre set, pin your opposition in a corner. It's just little basics like that, I think, John, at this sort of stage in the game, that if you can get some of those right early doors and just try and gain a little bit of confidence from that, then hopefully the performance itself improves overall. Yeah, it's how you start, how you start and how you build on that. So we're now midway through the tackle count and limited metres made. But again, just, just you can see it creeping in. That's, there's a soft spot there behind the rook. Marker's not working hard enough. Kicker able to kick off the front foot. Moylan puts it in a corner. And that's a good riposte. That's a great kick. It's a great kick. See that just, the visitors. The, just the momentum was lost in the last tackle there. You get you got Oliver Holmes sinking in behind the rook. There's a natural soft spot in behind the rook, and that allows that. It allows Moylan kicking off the front foot. Yeah, that's, that makes a, a whole lot of difference, and he's got all the experience in the world as Moylan. So Hull with a set here to try and uh, get some more meters on the board with Cameron Scott down to the left hand side. Darnell McIntosh making his 150th career appearance this afternoon. Danny Houghton back inside. Houghton, as we mentioned, his 400th appearance for Hull this afternoon, and at the moment, one that he uh, will not be too happy to remember in future. But they've got a chance here and found a little bit of space over on the far side. Sutcliffe is wrapped up in the tackle, brought back in for Smith, and now towards Herman SASA. They've kept the ball alive. It's another offload from SASA. He's done that an awful lot so far this season. Morgan Smith is wrapped up 
in the tackle. Back again, and now an opportunity for Famanu Brown to put some pressure on the Lee line, and they've kept possession. Over. Yeah, good scramble defence. Good scramble defence because it was good. It was it was a really committed chase from Jordan Lane. Never took his eyes off the ball, but the offload came away and the leopard scrambled. They wrapped it up. The ball's turned over, but at least on this occasion they have pushed Lee right back to their own line again. That's oh. Twice on the bounce now in Move. successive oh, no. sets since the start of the second half, oh, no. and those are tiny little positives that Tony Smith will be looking to see happen oh. more and more now. Move. To the side, As the home two. side just have to really try and get their heads together and perhaps to some degree try and forget about the scoreline. But at the moment, Lutelli trying to punch a hole through this home defence. Dwyer waiting. Still third. And a good shove Still forward. Third. And so Donald is wrapped up in the Still tackle. Third. Dwyer again. McNamara, who's had a terrific debut against his old side thus far. Gareth O'Brien has come back into the line again. Go five. Moylan. And it's been kicking those high balls up into that corner all Go afternoon five. so far, and it's been very, very effective. Oh, no. Very Go difficult five. to defend against as uh, Holler pinned in on their own 10-metre line again. Yeah, well taken by Texo. He had to be smart there, but Lee Leopard's pushing back and taking metres away from Hull FC here. Tyndall being pushed back as uh, Smith manages to find McIntosh. It's uh, out of the line there as coming away with it is Sutcliffe. Two red shirts and he manages the offload as well. That's nicely picked up by Brown and Brown has got away from the defender here. Brown up against the line and just running out of steps as he falls forward, loses his balance. Picked up by Danny Houghton. This is more positive stuff here now for the black and whites in towards Morgan Smith. Smith being pushed away to the left-hand side and now queuing up for offloads here as Houghton has hold of the loose ball. Smith again, this is better stuff from the home side. Nick Stavely to the 20-metre line as he eventually takes the tackle. More and more positives starting to come from Hull FC. Pushing his way through is Jack Brown. Down to Brown again, for Manu Brown in Ted this time. That Tex Hoy with the short offload looking for Jordan Lane, but picked up by Gareth O'Brien, and they're away again here. The Lee Leopards with a counter punch as Ricky Lee Telly is eventually brought That down. was great work by Kyle O'Donnell. I think he put the pressure on Tex Hoy from the inside. Leo Telly has turned defence into attack. And where are we now? First tackle into Hull FC territory. Moylan with the offload. Oh, and there's gaps everywhere. Hanley. Brought up short. And they turn defence into attack so quickly and so effectively. Lee Leopards in this game as uh, Holmes brought down just inside the 20. And uh, McNamara finding O'Brien, but his grubber kick is pushed back. And will they get the ball back here? Not played out, third. It's not played out. Yeah, ball retained by the Lee Leopards. No, no tackle restart, though. No, no, no more six again. So they haven't got to, too many opportunities to push against the line as Moylan brings it out to the right-hand side. And he's still keeping the ball alive beautifully here. Moylan with a little grubber kick through, Moylan chasing after it and nicely pushed away by Jordan Lane. Yeah, rear guard action after the first signs of life, the first green shoots for Hull FC for some time. And it was New Brown, wasn't it, with the, uh, the break? But McIntosh started this all with the offload, Sutcliffe across the field, and then New Brown was the one who finally punctured the Lee Leopards' defence, and it took some great scramble defence from the Lee Leopards to prevent the Black and Whites from scoring. That's a decent bit of enterprise, is that? Take a look at this on the inside from Kyle O'Donnell. That's, I, I think that's a really significant uh, defensive intervention. So, hold with the goal line dropout then. And straight into the hands of O'Brien. And uh, Holmes now for the visitors. Dwyer again at dummy half. Goes to the left-hand side this time. And oof, big hit going in there on Ricky Lutelli as he lost the ball, but it was picked up very neatly by Josh Charnley. They have possession still. And Lutelli almost upended, just short of the line. We're calling for it over on the 
right. And Dwyer goes for it, going short. Little short hands, and Oliver Holmes with a tiny little gap running over the line. Uh, the referee will have another look at this one. But it looks as though Lee may well have got their first try of the second half. Tackle three, we've got a try on field. We're just checking for a possible knock on. Sorry. We'll camera five's our first angle. Run this through. It appears to always be back from Lee on this angle. I'll just check that again and see if we've got any other angles of this. Hughes is in possession there. That appears to be an offload. Check on camera one. Go back on this angle. Hughes is in possession and he offloads the ball. We've established on the first angle that that offload was backwards. So now it's on this bit. And that is back again. So we've worked out that the first bit's back, the second bit is back, and we're Don't just going to run this through the ground of the ball, please. No. And it's uh, we'll that behind the post there. Nicely checked we'll check it by angle. the video referees. And the ball is grounded. Thank you. And That's Jack Smith decision. has seen all he has to see. And Oliver Holmes will get the try. Just waiting for confirmation on the decision. And sure enough, there you are, Oliver Holmes, and that is, in fact, his 50th career try. Missed the first three games of the season for the Lee Leopards, but back in the side this afternoon and making a big impact. Yeah, just in the right place at the right time. He's more known for his defensive work and his, his grunt work in the middle of the field, but it's Hughes who flings a speculator over the top. Ben McNamara tips behind, and then Oliver Holmes, as I said, right place, right time, rewarded for it with a four-pointer. Lovely handwork, to be fair, from Lee. It was uh, champagne stuff, really, which originated from Moylan with that first offload in the tackle. And here he is now with an opportunity to add another two from what's probably been the easiest position he's had all afternoon so far. And sure enough, straight through the sticks, another one for him. And that means that uh, Lee further their lead just that little bit extra and the game is now starting to look like it's slowly but surely getting out of reach but at least Franklin Pelly is back on the side so they are back to 13. Yeah they're going to be restored in a, in a matter of seconds but again you just there's that much more space between defenders with a, a player loss on the field that's it. it's an obvious thing to say of course but everybody has to work that little bit harder I don't know whether this this game tells you and the scoreline tells you more about Lee Leopards or, or, or Hull FC this season uh, you know, there were rumours that were, were the Leopards going to suffer second season syndrome and you know they had a disrupted start didn't they with that enforced break as, uh, as Wigan their intended opponents in round two uh, beat Penrith in the World Club Challenge so a stop start for them Dwyer just away here sorry John as uh, he eventually gets tackled look for all the world as he was going to burst through the line there but uh, here's an opportunity for Zach Hardacre looking for the loose ball and he's uh, well did that one drop the uh, home fan is not happy about the crossing that went on either, but in the meantime, referee has said that they can get on with it. As uh, O'Donnell is eventually brought down. Touch judge just coming onto the pitch to have a close look at what was going on there. Either way, doesn't matter because they're off again here. They're off again once more. The Lee Leopards, Oliver Holmes again, Moylan. Pushing it down the right, but then comes back inside, looking to go himself here, Matt Moylan. And so close. Time Referee off. will have a close look at this Jackie one, because Matt Moylan thinks he may I've have got, got no the ball try. down. The referee Just disagrees. The please, it's down to the video ref. It's tackle five. We've got no try on field. We're just checking the ground of the ball. Moylan's in possession at this point. And I lose the ball on that angle. Camera two. We lose the ball there as well. I don't think camera one's going to give us much. Let me just have a look at this angle. 
and that ball appears to be out. Uh, let's check from the back angle. This one might give us something. Let's just go back to check that he maintains possession of this ball. He is in possession at that point. He is in possession. Is that, his hand is on the ball at that point. We've got a live call of no try. And the only thing stopping that from being grounded, it's loose with his hand off it against somebody's leg. Thank you, I've made my decision. Very, very difficult one for the video referee to see the legs and arms and all sorts in the way there. But it looks like this one is not going to be given. And it'll be uh, probably knocked on just short. Thanks, Carl. Referee just having uh, a word with the video. Jack Smith talking to Aaron Moore. And the uh, home fans just having a look on the big screen here as to what exactly has happened. Um, very difficult for this one to be made. But given the fact that it was given as a no try in the first place by the referee, there's confirmation. But it was a terrific piece of work from Lee, again, getting so, so close to getting another try. Yeah, it was. And again, they've been given a reprieve there, haven't they, of, of Hull FC, but they're so soft around the rook. The, 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 the marker's not doing the job there, and so easy for, for Lee to puncture that Hull FC defence. So, Liggy Sow trying to find help in the shape of Cameron Scott. And Scott bringing it forward. And uh, a little bit of a let off for Hull FC. As uh, Jack Brown. And support from Jordan Lane. And so, Morgan Smith gets it down to Gardner. And Stavely down in the challenge there and Smith with a high ball hoisted straight into the hands of Gareth O'Brien and Lee just comfortable now happy to play out the sets they've got a comfortable lead here and I'm sure they'll be more than happy to try and get a few more scores on the board before the game is over if they possibly can it's uh, Lou Telly Gets tackled just short of the halfway line. Dwyer, and now Hardacre, who's come into the middle. Hardacre, and a lovely offload there. Brought back in, and an opportunity now as Oliver Holmes will score. And it was simple as you like. Cut the pass through, take the man out, bring it back inside. And once again, Oliver Holmes is the right man in the right spot. Yeah, just too easy. And again, it's that middle area of the field in behind the rook. Mark is not doing the jobs, not connected not communicating that won't stop the Lee Leopards celebrating John Asiata giving a round of applause to his teammates there and I'll tell you what this was this was too easy Dwyer out from dummy half but it's just that step back inside the rook and the offload from Zach Hardacre and then from Bettner McNamara into Oliver Holmes and these are areas really where you should you shouldn't be punishing teams as easily as the Lee Leopards are I mean, before this evening, the, the Leopards had only scored six tries, admittedly in a game less than everybody else. They'd only conceded nine, so the defence really wasn't, wasn't a major issue. Their attack had yet to click. And ironically, without two of their best attacking players in, in Lachlan Lam and John Asiata, they're taking LFC to the cleaners. It's turning out to be a nightmare afternoon for the home side, and I'm sorry to have to say that there are one or two fans who are starting to make their way out of the stadium. With, what, 53 and a half minutes on the clock, some of them have already seen enough. And uh, they don't like how things have gone at all. This to further twist the knife. Well, I'll tell you what, Oliver Holmes gets a quick-fire double. He's, he's got two tries in four minutes. What, what, what price? A substitute back rower getting a hat-trick. I'll tell you what, penny for Tony Smith thoughts, because, you know, the work and the, and the, the, the previewing and the analysis all goes on midweek, but they are being torn to shreds by a Lee Leopard side who kick-started their season in the most emphatic of fashions. Tries number 50 and 51.
for Oliver Holmes in terms of his career, but we did not expect this at all. Certainly after the improved level of performance that we saw from Hull FC against Catalans last week. Um, well, we were, we were expecting things to be very, very different. It's not going to be easy for them coming up over the next few weeks either because their next five fixtures are looking very, very difficult indeed. They've got Huddersfield away, of course, in the Challenge Cup. Then the second of the derby matches against the Robins. Uh, that one at home. Huddersfield at home, Saints away and Leeds at home. That is going to be a very, very difficult set of fixtures coming up in the next few weeks, John. Yeah, absolutely. But they've got more pressing matters at the moment, and that is to, to try and grab something, stem the, stem the flow of blood this afternoon, because this has been... It's been a good, it's been a good performance from Millie Leopards, but it's been a woeful performance from Hull FC. Penny for them from Tony Smith. He really has been up against it this season with the number of uh, injuries that they've had, but as we mentioned earlier, the discipline, the suspensions that they've had, that hasn't helped either. A lot of their problems have been self-inflicted, but when things are going bad, they can go really bad sometimes. The missing, the missing Jack Walker, uh, you know, I think he had a, an excellent start to the season. Remember, he picked up a hamstring injury, scoring a try in the south of France. He was one of their better players to start the year. Uh, they miss him. There's a lot of homegrown talent as well. Joe Cater, Brad Fash, uh, Jake Truman, who many people thought when he signed for, for Hull FC was, was really going to take him to the next level. Meanwhile, as you can see, uh, the neighbours from up the road, 20 points to nil to the good at uh, Huddersfield. Here's a chance, though. Liggy Sow bringing it forward. We need to see more explosive runs from the likes of him in this game as it's hoisted forward here from Fumanu Brown towards the left side. And the ball goes uh, just a little bit too far forward for Liam Tyndall. But every time they just seem to have a little spark of life from somewhere, Hull, they get punished again by Lee. Yeah, it wasn't, wasn't the, the kicks. Well, Adrian Lamb will be feeling an awful lot better after this game, I'm sure, given the start that his side have had to this season. Well, they've been competitive in all, in all the games, though. I think the, the one surprise, really, was round one, wasn't it, when yeah. they got turned over at home against, against Huddersfield. Although, having watched Huddersfield since, I saw them uh, against Cass last week, and they looked very sharp themselves. That was the, that was the result that stood out to me, the, the defeat against, um, against Huddersfield. I think they were, they were really competitive against St Helens. The Leopards in possession. Hold it now, hold. Go for uh, Matt Davis has come in at uh, dummy half, and you just saw there Scott Houghton has picked up an injury, so it looks as though his 400th appearance will end in sorry fashion for him. Yeah, I'm not sure Danny Houghton woke up this morning expecting this to be the, the way that he ended his afternoon. We hope that that is a, a minor issue. We know he tweaked a hamstring last week, of course. Um, against the Catalan Dragons. We hope that's not a reoccurrence or any more serious. Do you have a, do you have a punt, by the way, at the, the five other names on that 400 list of players with, with one club? With one club in Super League? Yeah. That made it over 400. Well, I'm going to... Uh, well, there must be at least a couple of Leeds players. Um, Kevin Sinfield? Yeah. Rob Burrow? Yeah. Well, come back to me. Well, in the attack here, down the right-hand flank, looking for Tex Hoy. As uh, Hull eventually get upended, just five metres from the line. Is there a chance for a little bit of light here? Trundled forward by Brown, and then pushed out over the line. But at last, we see a little bit of spark from Hull. Good cover. I, I thought there was an opportune time, given that Hull had done nothing in attack all day. Uh, and they go and surprise us. Texoy, uh, the most industrious, I think, in a black and white shirt. Again, that dummy in that turn of pace. Uh, and they force a repeat set. Paul Wellens. Yep. Uh, James Roby. You've got one more to get. Johnny Lomax. Ten seconds. Nope. I'll give you at the end of the game. Let's get let's focus on LFC attack. I want to see them do something. I want to see them be be creative, be expansive. Brown out towards Gardner. And Gardner getting some useful meters. As Hull are on the attack. 
once more. Jordan Lane this time at dummy half. And Franklin Pelly pushing his way forward. Six more, it'll be for the home side as Morgan Smith gets closer and closer to the line. Right, what have you got, Hull FC? Let's see. Jordan Lane waiting. Goes to the right hand side. Oh, have they kept it live? They have. They might just get a chance there. A little sniff for Darnell McIntosh, but he's run out of space and he's having to come back in. And the momentum has gone just very slightly, but they might get another chance here. Lane once more in towards Gardner. Wrapped up in the tackle. Lane waits. In towards the near side, and Jack Brown. Brown keeps it alive. He's done well. And they're throwing the ball all over the place here, Hull. With excitement. As they sense the sniff of a chance as it's knocked through from Tex Hoy, but a little too far. Just like direction. I you know, appreciate we're, we're, we're 60 minutes and the game's gone, but it like direction and organisation. Liam Farrell. Zero. No. No. No, zero. There's going to be people shouting at the television, Fraser. <laughs> I've got things to concentrate on. Yeah, maybe not about, maybe not about that quiz either. Yeah, maybe. Just over the halfway line, the Lee Leopards now. Six, again. Well Six more, as you heard from the Hooter. And they take it quickly. And even though we're, what, 60 minutes in now, the rook speed has continued to be lightning fast for the Lee Leopards. And that's been such a weapon in their armory this afternoon. Marlon Lake Davis movement. at dummy half as it's brought in towards McNamara, who's had an outstanding game on debut against his home side. He's lost a boot here. So, uh, Kai O'Donnell will be out of things for a moment as uh, McNamara brings it back in again for Nakabuai. In fact, uh, it's uh, yeah, down to the right-hand side, Moylan. That's uh, Hardacre. And he's wrapped up again. About five minutes short here, five metres rather. Moylan with the grubber kick. He's been causing all sorts of problems for the whole defence this afternoon with those little kicks forward. On a he? string, on a string. Really good short kicking game. Just applies the pressure. Zach Hardacre has reverted to fullback. Uh, Gareth O'Brien, early rest for him, game done. Uh, he's ringing the changes again, he's Adrian Lamb. Adek has started all three games uh, that they've played in the centre. Obviously, of course, well known for being a fullback, isn't he? As Dan Norman prepares to go back on short kickoff from Hull FC, but it's come to naught. Back. back in the hands of Moylan. Moylan spreads it to Hardacre. I love him in this position. I know Gareth O'Brien has got that number one shirt. I've always liked Hardacre as a fullback. You know, when he comes inside, Gareth O'Brien, he causes all sorts of problems, problems here as well. But it's uh, forwards. Right. Go on then. I'm Danny Howe. Danny Howe's uh, big day. 400th Super League appearance, and he's a one-club man. So you got Sinfield, you got Burrow, you got Roby, got you got Wellens. Sean O'Loughlin's family will be shouting Lockers. at the television. Oh, Lockers. And Danny, well, congratulations, because... congratulations, Danny. That, that is an elite group, I think, in it Super is. League. They, it they, is they, very, very rare. Um, if memory serves, there are only 15 players that have actually made more than 400 appearances for various clubs. Yeah. To do, um, to do it for one club is, is, a, is a rarity in the modern game. Absolutely incredible stuff. And he doesn't, from him. he doesn't get the, the the result. He doesn't get the uh, the accolades today. Certainly in a team sense because this has been a poor performance from Hull FC. 18 seasons he's been at this club. An absolutely magnificent, magnificent servant for this team. Don't forget, coming up a little bit later on, Catalans versus Castleford. That's at 5:25. And then tomorrow we finish off the round with London against Warrington. Sky Sports, of course, the only place where you can see all the Super League matches live. That was a bit more lively from Hull FC. Decent Sutcliffe spread play. On the last side towards Tyndall and then hoisted once more again in the air by Morgan Smith. Now safely pounced over from Zach. 
John Lee. Let's have a look at Lee's next five. They've got Featherston in the Challenge Cup at home. Salford away, that'll be an interesting one. Wigan at home, Warrington away, and Catalans at home. So just as they start to get forward here yet again, as they threaten the try line, they are really starting to click into gear, as Hanley it was. And now Moylan, Moylan, simple as you like. Just a little bit too easy. Matt Moylan won't care, though. He's on the score sheet. He'll be delighted with that. And that crowns off a terrific afternoon from him, but a nightmare afternoon for Hull FC. Oh, and aren't they pleased as well? And again, it started in that area around the rook. Matt Moylan had the easiest of finishes. He just runs at a retreat in defensive line that was split open by Ricky Leotelli. Soft spot around the rook. That has been a theme with Hull FC's defence. Hanley into some space, and he gets pulled down by the despairing tackle of Liam Tyndall, but it's one pass. Defence in disarray, Matt Moylan with his first try in a Lee Leopard shirt, and now the march does happen. Hull FC fans have seen enough. They're on the bike, they're out the stadium, because when this gets bobbed over by Matt Moylan, you know, it's, it's an embarrassing scoreline, you feel. 46 points to four at present. It will probably be uh, 48 points to four very shortly. Uh, many thanks to Kevin Brown, by the way, who's just messaged me shouting it has to be Lockers. Yeah, thanks for that. The reason I forgot about Lockers is because the last couple of seasons that he was at Wigan, he only played in the big games, didn't he? <laughs> he won't thank me for saying that, but it's true. <laughs> they did know that I thought they were super smart in the Wigan organisation, just the, the, the way that they managed the last... Uh, the last 12 months of his career kept him fit, kept him available, talismanic presence. As I feel, Matt Moylan has the, the, the potential to be at the Lee Leopards because he's, he, he's grown in stature as the games has gone on. We, t we said it would take him time to settle. Well, this looks like a settled player now to me. Adds the extras, 48 points scored away from home after a stuttering and... Well, fairly uh, disappointing start to the season as far as Lee were concerned, it's probably fair to say, but Matt Moylan looks like he's now very nicely settled indeed, and that partnership with Ben McNamara in the halves has worked an absolute treat this afternoon. Just over 13 minutes to go, and Lee Leopards will feel there's a very good chance for them to get a half-century on the board in what's been a really, really disappointing afternoon for Hull. I'll tell you what as well, points difference, again, you know, I've been saying this every week, you look at the top three positions at the end of 2023, we decided on points difference. First, second and third in Super League, we decided on points difference. So if there is an opportunity for a side like Lee on a day like today to, to rack up a, a serious score, that could really pay dividends. That could be the difference in a, in a league ladder place at the end of the, end of the season. It certainly was last year. Davis waiting... That's a uh, dummy half. And here he is again. And that's it. It's uh, Moylan who uh, punches it forward. And a long one for Texai to go chasing after. And that was a 40 20, I think. So even further punishment one second, it's here, Matt. for the home side. Just, just wait for me, pal. Wait, Matt. Matt Moylan with a terrific effort, and he spotted it straight away. Meantime, Nakabuai bringing it forward out towards this near side, Dan Norman. They bring it down the line again for Hardacre. He's trying to keep the ball alive, trying to offload, but eventually gets brought down just 10 metres short of the Hull FC line. Davis waiting, goes to the left side, O'Donnell. And he's held up short. Davis again. And it's just so quick and so easy as Norman again towards the tent. They seem to be happy to just throw the ball around at will. So quick. And towards Norman once more. Just short of the line. Davis waits for it. He's got O'Donnell away to his left-hand side, but goes further back instead, looking for Lutelli. But on this occasion, hands in at the tackle there. No, it's just an errant pass, I think, from uh, from Ben McNamara, who's had a, a really special day, I think. He's, he's, he's played incredibly well. There's been a number of 
standout performances in a, a lead jersey. Yeah, just a bit of pressure applied from Hull FC, forced him into a pass that has drifted forward. Well, we've got what, just over 10 minutes remaining in this game, and it's uh, time for you, John, to start thinking about who's going to be your Betfred player of the match. So get your thinking cap on. I think there's quite a few um, that could be coming from uh, the visitors this afternoon. But I'll leave you to muse on that for a moment or two. Meantime, Hull in possession. Still in their own half. And still trying to find a bit of respectability from somewhere in this game. Here's New Brown. That's the off road from Smith. And then tackle is walked up, uh, wrapped up. And uh, loss of possession there. And the referee, well... He spotted it eventually, Cameron Scott just losing possession in the tackle. No, it's the day they'll want to forget, isn't it? Uh, look, they're a good bunch, the Hull FC players. There's, a, there's a, a heap of quality in there. It just isn't working for them at the moment as a team. It looks disjointed. Obviously, at this point in the game, they're doing things that, that this is not game plan. This is, is trying something, anything to puncture what has been a really resilient uh, defensive display. Is, is this one of those where you just have to hold your hands up and, and, and write it off as a bad day at the well, office? I'm not sure, because Tony Smith will go. He will, play, he will pay credit to the opposition, because I think that Lee Leppers have played well. They've looked good, and they've managed their absences extremely well. But there's no two, there's no two ways about it. This is a below-par performance from Hull FC. Well, Lee could make it even worse for them here, down the right-hand side. And eventually, the tackle is stopped. And it was Handley who was uh, in possession as Davis brings it in. Big tackle goes in there on Frankie Halton. And they've got this set up now. They're not on the right stick. This is the setup that's dangerous. Davis, McNamara brings it through to Moylan. Moylan brings a few more in possession as it's picked up by Hardick and then turned back inside in towards Trout. Trout pushing forward, waiting for support. Hardacre from Davis. As McNamara, he's just playing, playing with the ball now, just waiting to draw in a tackle. Davis again then, back towards Hardacre, brought in towards the middle. Looking for Holmes, a double try scorer this afternoon, which is another thing that we didn't expect we'd be seeing in this game as uh, a little grubber kick from Hardacre chasing after it was Lutelli but this time the whole defence holds strong yeah and it is Tex Hoy again I think you you take Tex Hoy out of this uh, out of this whole FC side I, I think they're looking at 60 or 65 points he's been he's been excellent he's been he's had to cover an awful lot of ground I, I think he's been one of the few positives for for Hull FC this afternoon well he played in the opening three rounds of the first four, uh, but started only once this season, Tex Hoy, this afternoon, is his second start, and uh, he's shown why he's uh, really uh, been a, a, one of the few highlights in this whole side this afternoon. No, and it's not going right, it's not going right, is it? The ball not travelled 10 metres, uh, and so it'll be yet another possession for the Lee Leopards. The most impressive thing about the Lee Leopards is how non-starting individuals in key positions are slotted in so well, and that is, you know, a huge credit to the coaching and the culture in this club. And they're not done yet. As uh, Holmes gets wrapped up, they still want another one here. They'd love to try and break the 50-point barrier. As uh, Davis wakes for it, goes short, trying to find Trout. Trout is brought down. Davis again, We're waiting for it, the, the ruck speed has slowed right down now, McNamara back in towards the near side with Nakabuai, and he's brought down as well, back to the left side again they go with McNamara and Moylan, and into Lutelli, and Ricky Lutelli gets his second try of the afternoon, and the heavy, heavy legs of Hull FC have been brought to the fore once again and Lutelli gets his second and it's just too easy. Yeah, it's superb play. Pre-play, Matt Moylan moves late across the back of the rook. He sees the numbers, counts the numbers 
and then takes takes full advantage of that. Yeah, it's Moylan who's who's the second receiver. We'll try and show you. We'll try and show you pre pre uh, play the ball, um, and just show you what what he does. Uh, at, before the play, the ball is happening. He'll count the numbers in the defensive line, and he'll make a really late movement across the back of the ruck. But when he gets there, it's brilliant hands, isn't it? Yeah, superb from Ricky Lutelli again. The right man in the right place at the right time. That's now his sixth try of the season. He's so smart, is Matt Moylan. I, as I said, approaching 200 NRL games representative uh, accolades for him as well and it was a it was a huge target an intended target for the Lee Leopards they got their man he didn't exactly light up Super League in rounds uh, rounds one and three the games that they did play but I'll tell you what I think he's had, had an outstanding game with some real touches of class it does look like the kind of performance where Matt Moylan has genuinely announced his presence on the Super League stage this afternoon and his side starting to find a bit of form just when they need it because as we saw from those fixtures coming up they are going to need it and that is a superb kick yeah and he he kicks it as well 52 points to four but take a look at what man moylan does here pre-play I, I think it's outstanding he, he looks right but then he sees there's an opportunity left and he, he's counted the numbers he realizes the shot and then puts himself in a position there where he creates a three on two that is all the experience in the world and to be able to execute it as well i think is it is something else so time for you to name your player of the match john I have a feeling it might be that fella there. My Matt Moylan player of the match. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, honestly, just, I mean, there's been a number of, of good individual performances, but the touches of class, I think, that this man uh, has provided, you know, a couple of try assists to try himself, and just guided them around the field, that short kicking game, as we said. Yeah, he has been superb. As, uh, Holmes is uh, brought down here. And uh, plenty for Adrian Lamb to think about now, given the fact that uh, his son, of course, Lachlan, is off the field and uh, might be missing for a, a little while, uh, given the fact that he's got 15 stitches in his leg after uh, picking up that gash against Leeds last week, which uh, I'm told looks really nasty. And uh, Moylan hoists another one, but that combination of Moylan and McNamara has been superb this afternoon. Well, like I said, I mean, that, to go back to the point... He's, got, he's, he's everywhere. Look, he's got a hand in the ball there as well, I'm coiling. La 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 Lachlan Lamb is, is sitting watching on there. Yeah. And he's, he's clearly going to start games when he is fit. And, and that's part of the deal that Ben McNamara understood. But it's testament to McNamara's attitude and the coaching set up there and what they allow their players to do, the amount of reps they get in training, that when there is a change in personnel, it is minimal disruption and they are that attacking setup is still as effective to the halfway line with new brown and then to the 40 as he's eventually tackled and he didn't like that tackle at all he's uh, had a bit of nasty contact as he's gone down it looks like a problem here with his left foot yeah it's a lower leg manu brown yeah or high ankle issue well i mean that is the last thing that Tony Smith wants. If Amanu Brown picks up an injury here now. Oh no. Oh, oof. it's just. Yeah. He's just turned it as he's gone in and the tackle's gone down. And that's going to hurt. That is really going to hurt. And those, those sorts of injuries, I mean, they're bad for anybody, but for somebody whose game's based around footwork, speed, twisting and, and explosiveness, yeah, they're, they're, they're tough ones. Well, he'll carry on for the moment. But uh, but New Brown in all sorts of trouble there by the looks of it and moving very, very gingerly as he tries to uh, to keep an eye on the ball. He's just trying to get out of the way now. At the moment, as Liggy Sow comes forward. Uh, Cameron Scott just flinging it away to the left flank for Smith and then Hoy and then... Down the left side again for Sutcliffe. 
just over two and a half minutes remaining in the game and one that's been an afternoon to forget. But can they find something here to try and finish this game off? Well, the answer on this particular occasion is no. Superb defending yet again. Yeah, I think Amaila Hanley's played really well as well. Again, limited opportunities and, and, would, and again would have known that coming into this squad. Tom Briscoe and Josh Charney, established, experienced wingers. But I, I think he's taken his opportunity last week and this very well. Yeah, he lit things up last week. Looked a real live wire with ball in hand and he's continued that this afternoon. Nakabuai for the Leopards. Back in again for the player of the match, Matt Moylan. Hopefully we'll be hearing from him a little bit later on. Davis, a long ball in towards the middle, and this will just be punted high upfield by McNamara. And Liam Tyndall, who's uh, had a debut that he would probably want to forget for all this afternoon, I think. But I guess at least he's uh, happy that he's got himself in the side after having spent the first few rounds out with that thumb injury. Here he is again on the ball, trying to burst his way through the defence. Minute remaining in the game. And what has been a real standout performance from the Lee Leopards this afternoon. Meantime, Cameron Scott out towards New Brown, SESA. And now a combo. 20 metres from the line. Have Paul finally got something that they can pull out the bag just for the fans to have something to talk about on the way home? Unfortunately not. Taking a, a deflection out of uh, play. And that pretty much sums up how things have been this afternoon. For yeah, them, but so. they, were, they were putting under some pressure as well from, from Lee. I think the defensive line, they've had to do a hell of a lot less defence, I think, than they would do in a normal game. But a 50-point winning margin would make that man very, very happy. Very happy indeed. 54 points to four. Which do you think you'd be most happy about? The 54 or the four? <sighs> knowing, knowing Adrian Lamb. Knowing coaches, it, it's hard to say. He'd be, he'd be happy about both, I would think. That man will not be happy at all. He has an awful lot to think about. You can hear the boos coming from those who've remained inside the MKM Stadium to watch what has been a masterclass performance from Matt Moylan and the rest of his players. But it's the home side who have been well and truly put to the sword this afternoon. A half century and more stuck on Hull FC.